Hello, it's Scott Manley here. As you've probably heard by now, SpaceX have suffered a rather major test anomaly on the ground at uh, Boca Chica. So uh, they have been getting ready for flight number 10 over the last uh, couple of weeks. They'd already had booster 16 prepped and it had performed an engine fire on their test stand. But this was the time for uh, Starship number 36. It was another V2 Starship. Had been rolled out to the Massey's test site a couple of days ago. Had performed a single engine test without incident. Tonight they were getting ready to perform a full six engine test. The spacecraft was being fueled. We believe they had just finished filling up with the liquid oxygen. And they had begun filling the liquid methane for, we're not sure, a few minutes or whatever. And then just after 11 o'clock... It just erupted. It like for the stream that we saw it on initially was a NASA space flight stream, and it, this, their cameras just go white. Would they static fire while it's raining? Yeah, probably. I mean, even the Have other they? day when they whoa, whoa, what? That's no. Not good. Oh my god. I'm going to point out that during most of this, I am going to be borrowing a lot of footage from NASA Spaceflight, Jerry Pike, DY Cinema. Uh, and uh, you should absolutely go and watch the originals, and I will try to link those as much as possible. And also minimize my amount of use of this, because really, these are the creators that are on the ground, and you have to give them the respect and the attention that they deserve. I'm merely here in California... Um, Discussing this. I mean, literally when this test was happening, I was on my local next door mailing list trying to explain to people that no, those aren't UFOs, those aren't drones, those are planes. Yes. But anyway, now before I get in deep into any analysis, I want to point out that SpaceX did actually post an update. And the most important part of that was that they confirmed that all their personnel were accounted for and they are not aware of any injuries on the ground. So Thankfully, this has been damaging hardware rather than people. Hardware is a lot easier to replace. We do have a couple of different angles from photographers who perhaps had their um, their exposures calibrated somewhat better. We have, uh, there's, there's first of all, uh, Jerry Pike. Uh, again, you, he managed to catch the full dynamic range at various speeds. And I'm just going to show you a couple of screenshots from this. Um, Again, what you really capture from this is that as the tank sort of breaks down, as the fuel spills, we get this plume of self-burning gas that forms essentially a mushroom cloud. This is not a detonation. This is a deflagration. Again, the difference between a detonation and a deflagration is that... Uh, the detonation is supersonic. It produces a very hard shockwave. That requires very careful controlled mixing ratios of the fuel and the oxidizer. That is not what happened in this case. It is a big fireball, which is very impressive. It almost certainly produced some serious overpressure, but it is not a detonation. So anyway, this uh, giant fiery mushroom cloud was visible for quite a distance around. And I'll be clear that I don't believe it produced the kind of overpressure that would have damaged uh, anyone that was outside you know, the safety cordon, safety area. Uh, but given that there are these tiles on the side which contain silica fibers, it could well be that they vaporized or shattered a bunch of that into the cloud. So in the area downrange, be careful. Don't hang around. You know, you might have some of that stuff in the air or might be on the ground. And we don't know the effects of like breathing uh, tiny glass fibers. It's probably not good. Okay, so the best footage showing the actual failure in detail is from DY Cinema, who's shooting uh, footage for NASA spaceflight. And, uh, well, what we see from this angle is, is that the initially this starts out as spray of, like, cryogens, condensates coming out of the nose cone area, right? It's not the propellant tanks. Now, on the Starship V2, you have the all liquid oxygen tank at the bottom, then you have the liquid methane tank in front of that. And then above that, you have the space where you've got the, uh, you know, the PEZ dispenser. But more importantly, as we go up the side, we also have the two header tanks. Now, in the V2 Starship, we believe we have uh, 
a methane and an oxygen tank in the nose. And then there's a downcomer which runs along the windward side. Now that windward side, that is where the heat shield is. And it, we see that the spacecraft is splitting along that area. So I'm really feeling that this failure is related to the header tanks, or at least that is how we're manifesting. Now, how he actually gets this particular failure, I'm not sure. Uh, this could well be a design deficiency in the spacecraft, or it could be there was a design deficiency in their testing procedures, which led to something going wrong, led to a line being, say, overpressured, rupturing and then failing. We will find out more in coming days. But anyway, I believe this failure starts in the forward section with the header tanks. And initially, what we're seeing is this sort of collapsing downwards. And I think probably what happens is we have the oxygen tank spilling hardware down and something falls down, ruptures the methane tank, you get mixing and that's when the ignition starts. Now, as this starts to fail, we also do see what looks like a sort of a wave, shockwave or whatever, some sort of displacement happening that shows up at the common bulkhead between the fuel and the oxidizer tank. Uh, and that very quickly then fails and we get more mixing. Now, during the sort of breakdown of everything, the whole vehicle then begins to collapse. And as it falls over, I think the methane tank, the main methane tank, remains largely unmixed because at this point it didn't have a huge amount of uh, liquid in it. But as it falls over, eventually it hits the ground, spills, we get a large amount of mixing, and that's where you get the secondary fireball, which then propagates up into the mushroom cloud. Now, if you step through these videos in the original form, you can also see various recognizable pieces of debris float, flying around. You definitely see a few uh, COPVs flying away. We see sections of the structure flying in one direction or falling back to the surface. But, um, you know, obviously this is a complete vehicle loss and they're obviously, they've had serious damage to the test pad. At this point, I'm going to feel that Given that they said everything had to go right if they wanted to get to Mars or launch to Mars next year, I'm going to say that they're probably not launching to Mars next year. That was always a long shot, and now it is an even longer shot. So now I've thought a little more about this, and what we see is that we have the initial like breach happens in the middle of the heat shield and then expands more or less like vertically as if it's unzipping. Now, there's no fire at this point. This is simply gas pressure that's causing this thing to tear apart. But there's no propellant tank there. That is the forward section with the Pez dispenser. And I think if we blew a lot of high pressure gas into that very quickly, I would actually expect it to fail around the Pez dispenser door where you've cut out a huge chunk of the structure. Instead, it's tearing from the middle of the heat shield where I've mentioned where we have those downcomers from the header tanks. So I'm pretty sure that what caused the initial breach was more than just the pressure. It was the pipes, right, that was are, were actually maybe hitting the site. I think maybe, maybe just there's a chance that there's some fluid hammer effect that's going on that causes the initial breach. And then you have the failure cascade as the, the header tanks fall down and damage the tanks below them, leading to the breach and then the combustion and the giant fireball. Or maybe we have a pressurized uh, fuel header tank with fuel sitting in the downcomer and then there's a breach at the bottom of the downcomer. The pressure pushes that fuel down and then that is like a rocket. That pipe wants to go up and guess what? It ends up tearing the side out of the rocket in its, uh, yeah, as, as it does so. Again, this is entirely speculation on my part. So my next question is when do we see the next test flight? We had been thinking that they were getting ready for a test flight before the end of the month, possibly or into or to July. Now, the booster's going to be fine, right? Although it did have some issues we were concerned about. Um, there is another Starship, Starship number 37, which is getting ready to get its engines. It still obviously has to have a lot of work on the heat shield because that's one of the more labor intensive processes. But you know, that could potentially be got ready in reasonable amount of time. Their testing facility out at Massey's, well, okay, that's probably offline for now, but they've demonstrated the ability to, you know, test stuff elsewhere. It's entirely possible that uh, we get 
some testing happening somewhere else in the meantime. I don't think the FAA is going to or- order a any kind of incident or whatever, any kind of uh, report analysis or whatever, because this wasn't an in-flight failure. This is a ground failure, and it's really up to SpaceX to, you know, solve their problem and move on. Now, you know, obviously the V2 Starship is uh, starting to look a little cursed. <laughs> it's had some serious problems. I mean, you know, this one, it didn't even get off the ground, and this is unfortunate, you know. V2 is an optimization of the V1 in many ways and you know, it's <laughs> there's a there's a statement about engineering that it takes you know anyone can build a bridge but it takes an engineer to barely build a bridge and that's what they're doing with V2 they've optimized a lot of stuff they've tried to cut out a lot of you know excess extraneous mass and <laughs> clearly I think they've maybe cut out a bit too much and they need to put some back in Unfortunately, I don't think they've really learned... Well, unfortunately, I don't think this test is going to give them a lot of really good test data. This is going to be like, oh, wow, this really sucks in all sorts of ways. I don't think they're get, they're not getting flight test data. They've put this heat shield on it and it's been pulverized. It's a lot of work that has essentially gone to waste. They've tested this multiple times successfully. They didn't need any more experience with testing. So... Yeah, we're not sure where this puts the program, but I expect that at the earliest we might we could get a flight, you know, in a month or so, maybe even further out than that. But uh, I I hope that we just find the root cause of this and move on. But I don't see that we're flying to Mars next year. So look, based on the footage we've had, it does look like this is something that happens in the forward cavity, possibly related to either the downcomers or the header tanks. Uh, but beyond that, we don't have much, uh, we don't have the kind of ways to investigate this that SpaceX has. So they are going to have boots on the ground. They're going to have the information in hand. They're going to go through the hardware and probably figure out what went wrong and how they can fix it. It could be that they just messed up the testing sequence somehow. You know, there's a lot of different steps that have to happen. And if you don't follow them, perhaps some loop of your propel- uh, propellant system ends up with too much pressure in it, and then bad things happen. Alternatively, it could be that there is some fundamental design flaw in the V2 Starship that just means that it's time to cut the losses, sunk cost fallacy or whatever, and go over to the V3. We don't know. We're going to find out more about this in the future and we're probably going to find out when there is actually a a chance of another flight by SpaceX's uh, Starship and Super Heavy. Uh, And we'll all be watching, right? So yeah, I hope you found this interesting. I hope the SpaceX's investigators come up with a swift answer and solution and I hope that they share some of it with us. Until next time, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. (music) 